Welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, our oh, that's my best pirate, my best pirate voice. Hoist the sails, scrub the decks, all, all that, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, um, let's get into it. Uh, I'm here with Catherine. How are you going, Catherine? Oh, I'm all right. Uh, right? <laughs> so and that's I've the end of nothing. the pirate talk. <laughs> we, um, we were supposed to have Matt. Matt Mole's supposed to join us, and we just got a message that he, he might he might not be able to make it. So must be another possum in his roof or something. Um, so we're going to forge on without him, but he might drop in. He may or may not drop in. Those darn possums and pirates have waylaid him. I know. <laughs> they certainly have. But um, it's okay. We can forge on without him. Um, so here we are. We're at episode five of The Mandalorian, The Pirate. Yeah. Um, a lot going on in this and I don't know, like I spent a lot of the time, probably until about three quarters of the way through feeling like Millhouse, a bit like, when are they going to get to the fireworks factory? Like I kind of felt like we were, (laughs) I kind of feel like we were just running around in circles and doing stuff for the sake of doing it, but it kind of came together a bit at the end. I don't know. I don't know what you thought. Uh, well, you know, it was that seeing all the story threads that have been laid down so far this season yes coming together and it's like okay this is why we did this this is why we saw that um so it was a bit of a culmination but yeah there was a a bit of time where i was like you're spending a a bit of time doing this i I think you, you should be rushing just a little bit more, get a yeah. get a sense of urgency. Yeah, I was a little bit of that. Um, and I, <laughs> I, you're right that they were kind of bringing the threads together, but it kind of almost felt like it was the most least interesting threads. <laughs> or or the, the, when they had the interesting <laughs> threads, they kind of didn't pull those threads, and they kind of pulled other threads. But we'll we'll let's we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll get to it. I mean, when it <laughs> sort of started, and it was like it's the pirate. I was a bit like. Oh, we're really we're going back to the we're going back to the pirates, aren't we? Because <laughs> I, I kind of thought I just assumed that we would have dealt with them maybe the next episode. I think maybe even on the second or I might have, actually I think it might have been when I was on bad motivated with with Eric Struthers, and we, he was asking me about what was going to happen next week, and I think I went I'm like, oh, I think we'll, we'll get those pirates are going to be back. Um, and then when yeah. they didn't come back, I thought, oh, well, maybe that's just a one and done, and we don't have to worry about them anymore. And also, sorry. to just to rabble on here, Matt Mole, who isn't here to defend himself, was going on about how he'd read online that the pirates were going to be the <laughs> villains in the skeleton crew. Damn, <laughs> I wish he was here. I could rub it in his face. Oh, because oh, he was like, oh, it's it's happening. It's happening. And I was pulling up going, yeah, sources, mate. Where are your sources? Yeah, like, he was like, nah, it's Screen it's, boner it's happening, or something happening. stupid like that or whatever it was. Yeah. And- and then for like even the week after in the chat, he was like, "No, nah, it's happening," and I was, uh, and then he was like, "Oh, I didn't say confirm," and I was like, "You did," and he went back and listened. Anyway, you check the game tape, as they say. Yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> so anyway, mark that one down. So it's, it's annoying. He, uh, this is obviously why he's dropped out of this recording at the last minute. There's no possum in his roof. He's just gone. I can't show my face on this recording now. It's. <laughs> You know, these guys are going away to celebration for two weeks. You know, I'll have a little bit of a cooling off period. They'll forget by the time they get back. But um, let's let's take it back to the start. We go back to Navarro, the land of Dave Navarro. And um, it's all sort of, you know, things are ticking along quite nicely. And what's Grief Cargo doing? He's in some kind of like town planning thing. He's like the local council. Yeah, like it's definitely a, a town planning zoning committee deciding um you know where things will go you know it's a bit of a crossover with the australian show utopia mm. um probably a bit of sim city wasn't he really he's like oh i gotta put the oh, yeah. rail yard near the <laughs> docks and i've got to put the trade thing near the something and yeah he did remember the rail tracks for transportation so thank you train well, nerd i was gonna say <laughs> your, your train nerd you know what score one <laughs> for the train spotters out there 
<laughs> I thought it was more like whoop whoop. Isn't that a toot toot? Is that is that the is that the universal cheer of the oh, train we're... train nerds? Oh, we're we're very dignified. <laughs> um. So yeah, he does. He's having a little town council meeting, and he gets really interrupted by um a uh, great big bloody spaceship flying into the atmosphere. And um, now, am I really silly for only just noticing that? Oh, that's one of the ships from the Clone Wars. That was like the Republic ships, wasn't it? Don't no, you're not silly. I didn't notice that. I mean, it looked familiar, but I didn't. You know, I need like someone like Corey Van Dyke or something. You know, some hardcore Clone Wars person to tell me what that is. Yeah, it's something. Yeah, it's something. It's some pirate ship. Although I have to say, surprisingly clean inside for a, for a ship that's run by a bunch of pirates. Like just like the bridge yeah, and, and everything. A mossy. Yeah, you'd yeah, think you'd be like leaving like bits pirate. everywhere. Oh god! Like in shed. Yes. Oh. The cleanest pirates ever. Those obviously, guys. there's someone working really hard swabbing the decks. Well, this is, <laughs> that's, got, that's, my, got that's the, my pirate knowledge done. We pride ourselves as the number one deck swabbers <laughs> in the galaxy, which is you know probably why that when they went down to the planet, you know, and uh, they just started wreaking havoc and smashing windows and stuff because they're not allowed to make any mess on the ship. Moss Nass so, is a so very, they're like. When um, teenagers move out of home for the first time, out of, you know, the clean freaks, you know, mums, and all of a sudden they just go wild and, yeah. and have mess everywhere. It's just leaving all the dishes out and, you know, all that kind of eating the spaghetti straight out of the straight out of the pot and all, all that kind of business, yep. all that student living. Um, is the Do we know who voices the pirate? I kept thinking, it was, I was getting Peter Dinklage vibes, but I don't think it was Peter Dinklage. No, I... I think we've looked at the credits. And, and it was just some actor. I don't it wasn't think like it's... it was. Which is unfair to say to whoever's doing it, but it wasn't like you go, oh, it wasn't like a Peter Dinklage where you go like, oh, I recognise that voice. No. Okay. No. All right. Uh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> he turns up and he's just kind of, I, I, this is the thing that Star Wars, and I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I don't, Star Wars is the only real sci-fi that I watch apart from Red Dwarf. And, you know, certainly ones that have... Maybe Star Trek does this better. Um, but the idea of that, like, a planet can be controlled and run from a single town always seems really <laughs> weird to me. That, like, they just park... Like, that town... Like, Navarro is smaller than the town that I grew up in. Like, it's smaller than yeah. Lingatha. Look it up on Google Maps. You know, population 5,000. But it seems like the town's only got about 100 people who live in it based on when they all leave. And somehow it controls the entire planet, and and like, do, do you always find that weird? Like, it, I'm, I mean, at least like when they invaded Naboo, you got a somewhat of a sense of scale that there were a lot of you know, they were sort of taking over cities, and they alluded to like people in camps and blah blah blah. Like they just sort of yeah. parked one ship over the town and and, and blob, bombed it, and they were like, "Yep." Yeah, it's implying that there's really only the one settlement on the entire planet, which you're right, is odd when you think about it. Although, you know, with when you colonize somewhere you start, yeah, with one settlement. Maybe they haven't done the other other cities type of thing and 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 maybe, you know, that might happen in the future. That's what um Grief Cargo was sort of wanting Dinjaran to do. But I just feel yeah. like if you get if you know if you want a planet or you need a spot to run your pirate operation, I'm assuming it's some sort of strategic, you know, which is why it's a port because of its strategic location. Blah 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 blah. Like, yeah. you could literally just fly and park on the other side of the planet, and you'd probably be left alone. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe you have to eventually have to clear them out. Maybe I mean I don't know. Like it's Star Wars. Maybe I'm, I'm reading too much into it. Um, but. Uh, Moss Nass, the pirate, which was what I'm calling him. Yeah, he basically is just like, I want this planet. And also the insult. He's also a bit fruity. He's a bit salty about the about these blokes getting shot down. Um, and just decides to sort of wreak havoc on the town, really. Yeah, like absolutely destroy the place and then just continue to sit there. Like I didn't really quite get the plan you would sort of think well i want to control it because it's making money why are you then destroying the resource it's making money but anyway 
pirates maybe aren't known for their long term thinking. Yeah, it's even um, more about the the insult really than the strategic. Yeah, like if it was just about the insult, I could almost understand it. But then it was sort of implied later on that it was a that the pirates wanted it for that there was more at play, um, you know. Yeah. So, grief cargo gets the message out. Um, and uh, sends it off to the New Republic. You've got some cool little groovy hangout bar, like like a Top Gun, like the Top Gun bar kind of thing, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. There's this kind of like groovy you music need some playing. Volleyball. And, yeah, <laughs> we're just hanging out in the in the bar in their flight suits. And yeah, um, as you do. And then we we get um, oh god, I've, I'm sorry, I've forgotten Carson his... Teva. Yeah. And I've forgotten Carson the actor's Tiber. name as well yeah. too. It's the the bloke from Kim's Convenience. Um, Paul. No, I've, I've lost it. I've lost it. Lost it. Ah, oh, this is the Paul sound Sun of Hyun two Lee. people Paul looking Sun up. Paul Sun Hyun Yes, that's Paul yep, Sun Hyun Lee. Yep. That was the sound of two people looking <laughs> the, up. Looking at the same time, who you know is becoming very you know serious regular now. So obviously he was the you know the New Republic guy pulled Din Djarin over, over a couple of times and saved him from the spiders. And uh, mercifully, he's much better actor than Dave Filoni. So you know Dave Filoni <laughs> stayed on the other side of the, of the camera and and he's kind of led with stuff. So he gets the the message out. You know, Griff Cargo's like, hey man, you said you'd give us a hand sometime. I know we've kind of told the New Republic to shove it, but um, we could really use your help. And then he's not here again, Matt Mole. We get the big Rebels cameo. But it's not Thrawn. Yep. And it's not Sabine. It's Zeb. It's Zeb. In all his glory. Looking Zeb. looking pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I didn't think we would see Zeb in live action, to be honest, because he's he's a tough character. To put into live action, mm. um, you can't really do it with a mask because he's already, yeah. Because yeah. It, yeah, it's not quite. He's not quite humanoid. He's a bit uh, more than that, and yeah. So we saw him, and it was voiced by uh, Steve Bloom, who voiced him in Rebels. Mm-hmm. So yes, and yes, the credit said Zeb. So yeah. So I'm a bit surprised to see him having joined. Obviously, the rebellion, and now nice the new blue, Republic, uh, thought, blue flight suit. He's got he's repping Blue yeah. Squadron, your favourites, who've been brought back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's the mustache, Seb? <laughs> Don't you need to have a, a sweet mustache to be in Blue Squadron? Glorious mustache. Um, yeah. So I thought he was going to be off um, uniting his people, but maybe he did that and then joined the rebellion. So yeah. I don't know because obviously it's been a while since we've seen him. So it's a nice little left turn that obviously the Ahsoka's coming soon. Um, so, you know, I think all all bets, I mean, you can definitely say that he'll be in Ahsoka now in one form or the other. I mean, they built the model. So it's quite interesting that they've just they've launched that now. I wonder if we'll, if we'll get the rest of the Ghost crew at some stage in the series. Um I mean, he didn't really serve any purpose apart from doing a cameo. He basically just sort of came over and chit chatted and, and and walked off. Uh, yeah. But you know, it was cool. I'd never seen that act, that creature in live action. Like you said, it it has to kind of be done with computers to to look effective, especially when you're doing it, already doing it in animation and it's already expressive. You know, like if it had yeah. been a mask to start with, and then a cartoon, you know, like a Greedo or something. You you kind of work with the restrictions of the mask when you animate it. But he was very expressive in the cartoon yeah. so yeah okay yeah but again a rebels cameo and matt's not here to do- as soon as i saw that i'm like oh god i'm never gonna hear the end of this he's just gonna he's gonna be banging on about grand animal thrawn this whole time we'll get to the and we'll get to the end of the episode as well where i was like oh my god here we go but um effectively he's just like all right well you know i'm gonna go to coruscant and i'm gonna go talk to the bureaucrats and uh, see if I can get some help. And um, we go back to the office. You're, you're smiling. You, you, you quite... Tim Meadows. I love Tim Meadows. The ladies' Tim man Meadows. himself. The ladies' man. <laughs> well, I think he's the lady. That's the, we used to, me and my old flatmate Sean used to quote the ladies' man all the time. Terrible movie. Great sketch. Um, always good when he turns up in things. Yeah, he's... He was in something that I just watched 
feels really he was in recently poker face. as well as yeah i mean like even more recent than that he oh. was in something that i saw but he's but, very um, funny in brooklyn 99 where he was peralta's cellmate and he was the cannibal that was <laughs> yep. he's always good tim oh, meadows that's what i watched i watched um pop start um i oh, don't stop never, never stop, stopping never stopping and yeah, he was in that. I watched that over the weekend. Which has one of my favourite jokes of all time, which is, uh, what is it? 10 seconds, that's a third of the way to Mars, yo. <laughs> 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 which is one of the best jokes ever written, I think. That is that is an amazing joke. Um, yeah, Tim. always good to see Tim Meadows. Doesn't age. He looks like the same as he did when he was in the 90s. Like he was in SNL with like Sandler and like all those guys. Like he's... He's yeah. been around forever. Yeah. Will Ferrell, Sandler. Yeah. yeah. Um, All them. So he's sort of the office guy. Uh, and then there's sneaky Imperial agent herself. Kane. Um, Something Kane. It seems like she's just working her way up. She it seems like she's been promoted. Like, I think it's implied that she's been promoted because he kind of, there's a point where, um, what's his name goes into the office and like gives her the slide eye and there's a close up of her badge of just like oh you what like what are you doing in here and you've been promoted which i think is off the back of her ratting out the scientist writing out pershing yeah. so it definitely is you're adding layers to well what is she doing because her conversation with tim meadows if he if his name was said i didn't hear it he's tim meadows yeah um where she was very much, you know, like, oh, yeah, we can't do that. You know, you should sign up to the New Republic. So she's almost like stirring, not exactly stirring trouble, but, you know, she's not, you know, wanting to be enthusiastic about helping others. So almost helping to create the situations where something other than the New Republic will f flourish, which when you think about it, having the pirates and all of that causing trouble, causing mayhem, calling, causing distress will have people going, well, the New Republic's not going to help us. Yep. Who's going to help us? Dun, 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 dun. It's the First Order. <laughs> yeah, she's basically just trying to keep them out of the outer rim as much as possible and, you know, sort of quell those ideas. And Because I, when it, it took me a second because I, when he, she was sort of in there, I've gone, Oh, like Dr. Pershing was a scientist and they sent him out down to the essentially to the mail room. And he, you know, he got the he got the crappest of jobs. And she was literally like on Moff Gideon's ship as one of his lieutenants. And she's, you know, in the in you know, in the nice office or nicer offices of the New Republic. But obviously she's been promoted because she's she ratted out Dr. Pershing. So whether yeah. that was a means to an end, I feel like there's still more to it than that in regards to him. But as far as putting herself in positions of influence um, was quite interesting, really. Um, yeah, it was quite, it was just fun seeing Tim Meadows interact with a droid, really. <laughs> that was quite cool. Yeah. yeah, I did appreciate the, that's my working space. Don't put it down there. Oh, you've put it down there. Like when you've, you're down to just a small little section of your desk left yeah. and it's precious. There was some good droid action this, this episode, actually. There were quite a lot of good droids in this there yeah. was some good protocol droids some good astromechs and and all sorts of things um yeah so he doesn't really get much out of tim meadows he kind of says oh yeah look we'll we'll take it under consideration but you know blah blah, blah. so um he basically takes it upon himself to go and um tap the mandos yeah now he found them by looking for r5 i mean i'm asked asking too much to sort of go, well, how did he know to look for R5 and that would lead him to Mando, but maybe you went to Pally. Now, I have to, this is sort of where I went, okay, you're flying to Coruscant, you've changed, you've gone to find out who you have to talk to, you've gone and had your um, meeting with Tim Meadows. Mm. How much time it does this take while pirates are ransacking yeah, Navarro. It did, like, it did occur to me. Couldn't you have just sent an email? Like, I know it's implied that you won't get anything done if you basically don't do it in person. Um, but, yeah, I don't know whether, yeah, how he knew that R5 was with Mando. Maybe it had been spied. The N1 had been spied with R5, or they just kind of, who knows? They might have a 
track when it who knows um, there's a star warsy way to talk around these things <laughs> i'm sure there usually is um so yeah he goes to the the, the covert because you know, when he pulls up i was just like oh god this is the most unsecure covert in the world like he just found it within five minutes but at least there was some kind of explanation about why yeah him him finding it i've no that's no argument from me it was a bit of a roundabout way of well how did you know to ask r5 but i'm a bit I'm happy enough to go, okay, fine, you know, about that. Like I'm not going to get hung up on that. Yeah, at all. yeah. But, yeah. But, again, it's Hero of the Rebellion R5. Yeah, like, what does he do exactly? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. if it just means that he's a droid that's kind of, you know, in the right place at the right time, that's great. Let's not go down the expanded universe stuff where he, the droid can use the force or whatever it is. We don't need any of that. Um <laughs> But he basically turns up. But he, can we just say, if R five's a hero of a rebellion, what is R two D two then? R two D two, he is a hero of the rebellion. Like, come on. Yeah, but he's still stuck at the same. He's still essentially in the same job. Like, he hasn't really changed. Like, he's just Luke Skywalker's droid. Um, but yeah, you know, that's probably that's pretty. That's pretty good. Pretty good gig, I think. Yep. Although he does like you know witness the Jedi temple burning to the ground and then go into a depression for a few years and switch himself off and everything else. But God, I, I, they still like, I still think about my theory for rise of Skywalker where like R2 was going to be the key to the whole thing that somehow he had, because he'd witnessed everything that he had this crucial information. Yeah. I mean, it's such a missed trick that you could have used R2 that way. But anyway, they didn't ask, yeah. they didn't ask my opinion. Um, so yeah, he turns up and he's like, "Hey man, we've got to get you know, Grief Cargo's in trouble. He's your mate. Can you go help him?" And um, you know, Din basically has got to try and sell the sell it to the Mandos because I'd I'd forgotten it because I have been <laughs> purposely skipping the intros as soon as they come up now so they're not spoil anything. So, and I was sort of like, "Oh yeah, I completely forgot that they, you know, shot up the town and had that big kind of fight when when Grief Cargo was trying to arrest Mando." Uh, when he was stealing Grogu. Uh, yeah, and you know, he kind of makes this speech. And I don't know, it was very like, there was a lot of helmet talking. This episode had a lot of like um, off-camera murmurings. Like, off, like yeah. what are you talking about? What does that person mean? <laughs> you know, what's the one that, what? What is she proposing? Yeah, that, yeah, there was a lot of like groups of people talking off-camera, telling you how they're feeling. Um, there was a bit of that for Grief Karga as well. Um, yeah, so Mando yeah. comes up, gives his speech, and um, doesn't get much. And then, what's his face, Vizsla, you know, starts giving a speech and does the about turn, which was a bit just like, ah, ah, you know, well, I do a little turn at the well, end. Uh, look, at least he's acknowledged that they weren't always on the same page and all the problems, but he's sort of stating the case as to why. He is going to go along with this plan. Yeah, but he kind of just goes, um, "These pricks did this. These dudes did this. We hate these guys." <laughs> but and the whole thing is, while I was listening to him talk, I, and I know, like at the end, he does the about turn and just like, "But that's why we fight," or whatever it was. When he was like halfway through that speech, I'm just like, "Dude, all you guys do is train for fighting. Why would you walk away from a fight? Like, it just give you, if nothing, it will give you something to do because you're just hanging out." training for a fight that doesn't exist at the moment. So you might as well get out there and, and um, crack some heads. They're also fighting monsters a lot. Yeah, well, they're kind of bringing More that than on you themselves. Would... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like that nuclear, you know, zero days without a without a meltdown. <laughs> like <laughs> Zero days without a giant monster stealing a kid. Uh, so, yeah, they do the about turn and, you know, the Mandos also, yep. And at least there was quite an interesting part of it where it was like, hey... If we do this, we'll be welcome on the planet and they'll give us a place to live and we don't have to live in this crappy place anymore where the monsters are and we can, you know, be accepted, which I thought was quite good. I'm like, all right, at least there's, we're working towards something. Like there's some, a little bit of progression here. And a, a good motivation, like a motivation, I believe. Yeah. That, um, yeah, they want that home. But yeah, it was interesting. It was Good to see um, Bo-Katan sort of 
taking the lead in when it comes to strategy because I'm like, yes, you know, she's experienced and she's not, you know, headlong into things. She'll actually think out the best way to do it. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and that's a pretty solid plan. I mean, it was, <laughs> they basically, again, it was that thing where it's like, there's only one town to protect on the whole planet. There's only one ship and the ship's got 10 little ships. So it, it's manageable. Um, so they, they kind of do the, they do the plan. They drop some of the Mandos on the, um, on the surface to sort of clean up the town. <laughs> I did like, um, uh, like they kind of cut to the town, the pirates have sort of taken over. So of course they've sort of, I mean, I know it got sort of bombarded, so it was already kind of wrecked, but it was, you know, they were smashing up and they were back in the school drinking, you know, like, yeah. you know, they, they couldn't get a drink. I'm like, ah, oh, follow, follow your dreams, guys. You, you got there in the end. I hope it was worth the trouble. Yeah. And a bit of like, could have you found somewhere else? Like, was there someone nicer or no? You're just stubborn and that's where you do Yeah. Drink. I mean, they okay. could have literally had one oh. of the bar. That there probably was an actual bar there that had alcohol that they could have just taken, but they were like, nah, we want to prove a point and drink in the school because we weren't allowed to last time because someone said no. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the bandos turned up. They sort of cleaned the, te- cleaned the town up. There's a, there's a quite a good um, Claire Stribling or like the, was it the, the, the Kowakia monkey lizard gag where he, yeah. he points and tells her that there's like an ambush coming. I thought that was quite good. Yeah. Yeah, that was excellent. Um, and there was a bit of minigun action and stuff as well. So, yeah, that, that was quite cool. And then Mando's up in the air with, with Grogu. They're sort of doing the aerial fight. And he's sort of picking off the fighters one by one. And the the stupid captain is just sort of standing there watching it all unfold. Doesn't move the ship. Doesn't, like, I, I don't know what he was thinking. Like, I actually thought originally they were going to board the ship and take the ship. But uh, yeah. didn't happen. I've... I was impressed by Din Djarin's flying. I thought he flew really well. I mean, I'm no judge, but I thought that's excellent flying. Really nippy that those N1 fighters, they knew what they were doing. Two small ships taking her, taking down a big ship like that seems a little... like they, <laughs> While being chased, they seem to knock that ship out of the sky without too much, with too much um, trouble. But um, I did like yeah. that the... Uh, the, the captain had like a wheel like on his ship as well. Did you see what he was steering? I'm just like, ah, oh, they've even put like a little pirate wheel, like the cleanest pirate wheel ever. The whole the whole deck was way too clean. But um, he did have a little like pirate wheel. Yeah. Very on brand. And yeah, and so the Mandalorians were making their way through the town up to Grief Karga's little, the High Magistrate's little office, which of course had good perch to have a, a, a gun which was keeping people and then the armorer comes up the stairs with her hammers and just belts them mm. yep she gives them a good wackadoo with the uh with the old hammers did she do she yeah no there was an ep- in the first season she fought the stormtroopers similar didn't she because did she like crack one yeah. of their helmets with the yeah. hammer as well yeah so she's pretty good yep. in the scrap yep um the armorer so yeah yeah, that was quite good. She sort of cleaned them out. Again, there's still only like 20 pirates <laughs> and they took over the whole town. Like I know it's, you know, you can't have hundreds of people and things like it's just, it's just is what it is. But um, it did feel a little small scale uh, in, in places. But uh, yeah, they kind of run them out of town and then all the um, the locals turn up again and, and, and grab it. And I did like, it was like that one pirate that, he, that Mando had beef with through the whole thing. He just took off at the end. He's like, all right, I'm out of here. This isn't working for me. The writing's on the wall here. Relatively smart. Relatively smart. He saw that, yeah, got out of there while he could. But, yeah, he just sort of, the pirate just sort of stands there and takes it while the ship just plummets into the ground. I just thought that was really weird. Like, for such a pirate king, you just seem to have no strategic nous whatsoever. Yeah. Again, no long-term thinking. It's just all here now. Grab, bang, but yeah, just yeah, no strategy. Mm. Mm. Um, I was a bit surprised that we didn't get the X-wing run-in at the end. I was expecting them to sort of 
have a moment where the you know they look like that they can't quite get the ship down or they're going to get shot down and then the x wing would would come at the end and and do the run in and you know take a few ships down at the I end I was but... never here yeah, well, I, I really yeah. I thought that was the setup for that. Like, I don't understand why he wouldn't have just go himself, at least if he's got the Mandos, Mandos to give him a hand. But, I mean, who's going to care, really? Official business. But I guess he came back later in the episode. But, uh, yeah, you know, cool sequences. That's cool seeing Mandos do stuff. I mean, I don't know. They're kind of... They're kind of cool, but they're not super interesting. The bad those really like their story is, is kind of interesting, but it's not super interesting. Like the the good thing about the Mandalorian was the the core Din and Grogu relationship, and we got none of that this week. Grogu was barely in it. Yeah. The, the relationship is sort of stalled. Um, the show, I think, is still trying to find its feet. Five in. Um, I don't. I mean, it did pluck a few little threads and, and set a few things up a little bit, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you reckon? Is it doing enough? Is it, got, is it riding the, the ship? No pun intended. Look, I have to admit when Grief Cargo was having his speech at the end, I've got to be, oh. Oh, he sort of like welcomed them. Yeah, so he, he sort of... Welcome he them. Welcomes them. He says, you can have this land from this bit to this bit. Like, I'm going, dude, you got a whole planet with one town on it. Like, give us a whole continent. Give us the continent of, you know, give us the South, you know, South America equivalent of Navarro. But, no, he's like, you can have the bit from the lava to the other bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, you know, that you have a home, you know, it was meaningful yeah um yeah so oh, i don't know it worked on me um <laughs> it passed the catherine uh, but test you are right yeah the the din grogu sort of dynamic isn't well definitely wasn't there in this episode and isn't always as strong as what it has been so well, I mean, like yeah, previous so seasons, a, it, I mean, I always make the you know thing that like Grogu was becoming like luggage, that he'd have to find a reason mm. to put him aside or give him to someone to do the you know when there was a thing that he couldn't be involved in, they you know they'd find a way to sort of, and they haven't really done that. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't been handed off to people in this series, but he's basically just not been inclu- <laughs> included or put to the side. Like I mean, not even so much handed off, he's just kind of been just left out. Like he he was sort of. I mean, not that he has to be in every episode, I suppose, but like that core relationship is the thing that made the show really good. Um, and when you resolve that relationship, which it, they kind of did, it's sort of like, well, what are we, what, what are we really doing here? And that's when, you know, we spoke about this last time when we said, where do they go from here? Like, do they just go down the the, the Mandalorian? What the you're fighting over Mandalorian? That's kind of where we're at. And it's just like, well. It's just not as compelling. It's, it's basically just not as compelling. So you've got all these sort of additional threads and things to try and make it compelling. But um, yeah, so they get the home and then um, the armorer asks to see Bo Katan. And she's basically just like, all right, I, I'm buying that you saw the Mythosaur. Mandalore, Mandalore's coming back. You've got to go unite everybody. So. It's okay. You can take your helmet off. <laughs> like everything's cool. Katie Sackhoff's like, all right, that's enough episodes of wearing my helmet. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, it was it was good to see the armor going back to the forge because that is a meaningful place. So to go back there, revisit it, mm. you know, is meaningful. And you know, now that they have somewhere that they can call home. Just to sort of feel that importance of a of a home that to retake or Mandalore or rebuild Mandalore and and the armor is right in that Bo Katan is the one who can do it. She understands you know the children of the Watchway. She understands more you know quote unquote mainstream Mandalorians. <laughs> so so she was she was implying that she wanted them all to follow the way by the end though didn't she like she was kind of going you know once you get them they've all got to be weirdos like us though i i think it is implying that yeah there will be 
some kind of return to more traditional Mandalorian values, whether or not that's fully, you know, children of the watch way or whether it's more like a Bo-Katan way, but definitely not in a uh, Satine way. Yeah. Like that, that pacifist, you know, way that she was trying to get the, the Mandalorians to go to, no, nah, that's off the table, but definitely more of a, an embrace of, of the Mandalorian history and culture is definitely on the cards. So it will be interesting what the Amara actually has envisioned, uh, that's a hard word, for the future. Also, no Darksaber mentioning in the last few weeks. Like, they all know that Din's got it. There doesn't seem to be any yep. kind of like, hey, you know that thing that supposedly is going to unite all of us that that guy over there's got? Like, you know, which is so the other thing you know also how is you that they previously ones. Oh, did they mention it in the previous on? Did they? Yeah. So they showed that oh, I think it was yeah they showed that grief, not grief Karga, but um, Moff Gideon had it and that Tinjarin had it. So I think I part of me was like at the end, sort of thinking, oh, did the armor sort of put up Bo Katan to challenge Dinjarin for? Uh, the dark saber. Well, it sounds because like that's someone that, yeah, that she's maneuvering him to sort of. She's kind of maneuvering her to do her bidding, really. I think, yeah, and kind of just using yeah. Boca Town's ambition as a you know tool to to to, to get everybody to join the nutbags. Um, but I yeah, I, it just seemed a little bit weird that that didn't sort of that didn't come up. But again, I it, it's sort of floating on on in the background, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then she sort of comes out and she's got the helmet off. They're all just kind of like staring at her. She's like, ah, <laughs> yep. And it's just weird. They all just accept it. Like, it's just like, like Din Djarin got so much crap and they all gave him so much crap about taking his helmet off. And she, they're like, oh, she works in both worlds now. It's like, all right, we've just got this real compromise that we've just we've just dropped in after we were just refused to budge on everything before. And Din Djarin is just like, yeah, I suppose that's cool. Like, why not? Um, I don't know. I just feel like that was like, I've written myself in a corner here. Oh yeah, we can just say that she, she she walks in both worlds, but I don't. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's let's see what happens. And then it's kind of like, oh, we've got a new place to live now, but we immediately want to make a play for Mandalore. So I don't know whether that just goes in hand in hand with well, we're out in the open now, so we need to get our planet back, which is weird. Like I kind of thought that would be like the as soon as you heard that Mandalore was gettable, you would have gone straight for it. But okay. Got to build the strength first. Yeah, I suppose which so. Which is probably what they'll do. Yeah. yeah. So it does leave it in an interesting place. But again, it's like, I don't know, like Din and Grogu are just sort of window dressing at the moment a little bit. I mean, I know they're sort of centering on these little action bits that they have, but they're sort of just kind of along for the ride a little bit. Like I actually kind of thought yeah. at the start, like I, I kind of thought, you know, 10, 15 minutes in, I'm like, oh, maybe this will just be like a no Mando episode. It'll be like the Book of Boba Fett with no Boba Fett. Halls will be so happy. He'll be just, you know, <laughs> which I guess they kind of did a few weeks ago. So I just think there's just less and less of that. Like they're just, they just don't quite have the juice for the, the Din and Grogu stuff at the moment. And yeah, they're just kind of been dropped in. But uh... yeah, so you sort of wonder with them, getting Din and Grogu back together in the book of Boba Fett because originally I think I read in one of the review one of the articles that it was going to happen during the season but they couldn't bring themselves to have any episodes without with the two of them separated so they did it during book of Boba Fett please correct me if I'm I don't know I, I haven't heard that but that's pretty stupid logic really because that's actually what makes it compelling <laughs> so it's like who cares if they're apart if you just cut to them that's what makes it compelling and then when they get back together but anyway whatever yeah but but yeah maybe you know these so they had to shuffle around stories and move things around so that's why grogu maybe wasn't really in this episode because originally he wasn't in it yeah he yeah he wasn't in it but i don't know i'm 
you know, Charlie Day with the red strings right now. Yeah. So I, you were that last week. Yeah. It's my turn now. I still stand by that. Um, <laughs> look, I, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to love this episode because I think it had some cool, like it had a lot of like Mando's doing cool stuff and dropping out of planes yeah. and, and some cool fighting and this is the way. Like I'm just like, if I hear this is the way one more time, I've just about this is the way <laughs> out, seriously. Like we'll get to celebration in a sec, but like going through some of those Facebook posts that people put up and just everybody's just signing off, this is the way. I'm like, man, it's not may the force be with you. It's 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 a pale imitation, people. Think of something new. Um, yeah. But... I don't know. I uh. See, like my sort of favourite parts of the episode was like the the office conversation, um, yeah, even the conversation at the bar where it's that this is the state of the New Republic right now. Yeah. My, I'm very interested in that. Okay, this is the state of the New Republic. It's really is very focused on you know the inner and middle rims I, th- I think and the outer rims like okay yeah whatever we we just don't you know la 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 we won't look and we'll just ignore everything's happening yeah, yeah so i'm interested in that in that part so for me that was sort of a you know the more interesting part of the episode, I feel bad. <laughs> because it was really good action. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, the action was great. It was like, oh, this is cool. Like the anyone zipping around, it was really cool. And and yeah, the, the dropping in of, of Mando's was was good. But yeah, I like the the yeah, setting up of, of what the outer rim is. And that leads us into the stinger scene at the end. Yeah. So um, our buddy, the New Republic pilot. Um, Carson. Carson. Paul Carson Song Teva. Um, is He's just like the most, he's just like the most happenstance guy on patrol ever, isn't he? He just sort of runs into everything of importance <laughs> out there. But uh, he's out on patrol. So he wasn't, he didn't come in for the run in and the, in the fight, but he's out on patrol and basically he stumbles upon a, Lambda class, which is one of my favorite ships, the old Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader, you know, tri- transport, very cool looking ship. Although, hang on, I thought they were decommissioning all the Empire ships and not using them. And then they're using an Empire Lambda class ship for transporting an Imperial prisoner. <laughs> like, is that just like, seriously? Yeah. But like, yeah, they won't like- even like use Imperial whatever it was that he had to decommission money or whatever it was and ships and yeah, like let's just fly a most high powerful prisoner in an Imperial ship. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't reuse medical equipment or even the biscuits, which, you know, just need stickers and stuff. Like, yeah. So anyway, he stumbles upon this this ship that's, that's uh, floating in space. It's been hijacked and, you know, decompressed. It's in pretty bad shape. And he does a cool thing, which I've never really thought about, which was the little periscope on the R2 unit. Like, it's like a little <laughs> little remote camera. Oh, little. It was R7, wasn't it? I was very worried for his little periscope. I was like, oh, don't you, think you that's like lose a, it. Like a, don't you lose it. think that's like R2 is like a iPhone 4 and this is like an iPhone 12 droid that's just got more woozy updates. Like it's I essentially a phone, it. but it just does Same. more stuff. Like, I don't, like, does R two does R two's periscope do that? I know R two sort of has more stuff as the movies go on. Like, he can fly all of a sudden <laughs> and he can do other things. But like, his little periscope pops well, up in Empire, but it's just on its little stick. Like, yeah. Well, he hasn't had a a need for to have it floating. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I was, you know, it was it served it served a purpose, which is essentially, you know, there's a ship. It turns out it's classified. It turns out that Moff Gideon was on that ship and he's been busted out. Obviously, I mean they've already hinted to it. They basically flat out said it in a couple of episodes ago anyway. Um, and I was waiting for the Thrawn sting. I thought for a second it was like his Thrawn. <laughs> I was I was literally going was Thrawn on that ship. In Rebels, I'm like, no, he was on like a Star Destroyer or something. Like he wasn't, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like that yeah. ship's come back 
and then something's happened. I'm just going, oh god, they're going to do Thrawn. Oh no, like Matt Mull, we're going to hear the end of this. I did Zeb. Now they're going to do Thrawn. <laughs> they're just setting it all up. But um, no. But the nice little part of it, which was actually a good little twist, was that it, essentially they found some Beskar on the ship, and it implies that some Mando's busted him out. Yes. So this was again part of the previously on, where um, Dinjarin said to you know the bit that was in Boba Fett, where he said that um, Moff Gideon had been captured by the New Republic and sent for questioning and you know for a trial. And um, Paz Bivzla, uh said, oh, he should be dead So, you know, for what he did to Mandalore. So you wonder whether some of the Mandalorians that Bo-Katan used to run with, whether they're the ones who've captured, taken Moff Gideon. Mm. Which would be a nice little twist that he's actually just a prisoner with a, with a more dangerous group of people rather than he's just been busted by the Empire. You know what I mean? Like I actually think that would be yeah. more interesting. Or if he's actually gotten some mandalorians just to do his dirty work and just to bust him out whether it's like um you know axe woves and and what's her name the other lady as well who are in the previous series you know who are running with yeah. bo-katan that they've basically just gone well you know he pays blah 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 we need we need money we just busted him out or something you know, something along those lines i don't know like at, at least that was i was kind of like oh that's that's a good twist that's an interesting thing no thrawn that was good um yeah yeah, that worked out quite well. So, yeah, look, you know, I enjoyed it. Again, I feel bad, like, going, like, uh, like, I think the way it was put together was good. I thought the action was good. I just, you know, it's just the, taking the time to get to things and the weird shoe leather and the, some of the weird logic jumps and stuff are, are still a little bit weird. And um, I just feel like a little bit more, a bit more right. T- more passes on the on the writing and a little bit more forward planning. I feel like it could have been tightened up a lot, but hey, maybe we're just too spoiled for Star Wars. Maybe we're just, yeah. but um, yeah, there Look, it is. I'm going to be half glass half full tonight. In that, okay, the threads that we've seen so far this season are starting to come together. So I'm a bit more okay. We're it's going to start to come together because. Let's face it, with Bad Batch, I've been not negative Nancy, but definitely not as into it. But over the last few weeks, I've been, oh, yeah, Bad Batch is really coming together very well. Bad and Batch it's is a quite enjoyable show. Is excellent. I haven't watched tonight. Yeah, me either. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I nearly did because I, <laughs> I finished a bit before you. And then I was kind of like, oh, maybe I'll quickly watch a Bad Batch. I thought, no, no, it's a double, you know, it's the fine. I'll just, I'll save it. I'll get this up and then I'll, I'll pop it on. Yeah. Look, full disclosure, I was watching Ted Lasso. I, <laughs> Is that I the new one? I haven't Lasso. caught up yet. I mean, Ted Lasso, a little, I mean, they went to Chelsea last week, which is my club and back to the ground I used to go to all the time. I did get a little like, oh my God, there's the bridge. Oh, that's so cool. Although, although I was watching with Kat and I'm like, they're wearing last season's kits. That's not right. They should be. That's the. They're not even wearing the right shirts. This was filmed ages ago, and I'm like, who's that number six? That's not even a player. Like that's not a you know. But anyway, and apparently though there was a little Ted Lasso controversy that there's a, um, you know the where he gets out the dugout and they've got like that. There's like the the Roy Kent banner on the on the tri- yeah. on the terrace, which is they've got that at Stanford Bridge. Yeah. They've got them for John Terry and and Didier Drogba and a lot of the famous players and things. And there is one there that actually says one of a kind. Ray it's Ray Wilkinson who was a, a manager there. He might have been a player as well. He was an assistant manager who who died a few years ago. And apparently they just CG'd his name out and put Roy Kent on there and didn't ask Ooh. the family and stuff. So I was Ooh. like, oh come on guys, that was a bit you know, somebody just saw, oh, that's already got an R in it. Instead of, we can change Ray to Roy pretty easily uh, without knowing your Chelsea history. So hopefully someone's apologized for that. Um, let's do a little bit of celebration talk before we, we sign off. Uh, the panel lotteries came out this week and uh, we got nothing. We got nothing. <laughs> We've done, I mean, we've five panel lotteries five, and nothing. nothing. And I had to go back. I was checking. I'm like, did I put the receipts in properly? Did I do? And I'm just like, no, I, I'm sure I did it all right. And obviously, you got, you take it personally because we, we've done very well. The previous celebrations we've done, and I think this is why we were being a bit kind of pragmatic because the last two we did very well, especially Chicago. 
Um, yeah. So we can't really complain, but you know, it's not the be all and end all. It's not. It would have been nice to get into that Lucasfilm one. You know, Ahsoka would have yeah, been interesting. That, that one I'm feeling. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> we'll be fine. Um, and looking online in a lot of the Facebook groups, a lot of people missed out by the looks of things. So, I mean, do you need to redo the thing so everybody at least gets one before some people get four? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I think it's just an algorithm. But, um, you know, people like I know Eric, who I mentioned before, Eric Struthers at Chicago didn't get anything, missed out completely. And some people do miss out completely. So it was our turn. Um, yeah. Hopefully it won't be the same in 2025. But uh not to say, hey, if anybody can't make a panel and you come to celebration, um, we'll take anything you can't get. So yeah, we'll uh, happily take stuff. But yeah, great for the uh, some of our friends got stuff as well, which is great and which is also good. But it's just yeah, we're just like oh wow, we got nothing. It was really weird because I woke up and the the messages were flowing, and I went back to my email and go like oh there's nothing there. So I guess like oh that's just and it was yeah, and it was right when my the, our, our the Airbnb got cancelled as well. I'm like oh god, so I've got that to deal with, and now I've got this to deal with, and it was all a little bit weird. But um, not to worry. So when do you, you fly out on Monday? Tuesday next week. What time are you flying out? I think we've it's like already three thirty in the oh, afternoon. Oh, there we were. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So you're going a few hours before us. Um, yeah. We won't go into too much. I land but... five to six Wednesday morning in London. Uh huh. Well, we just I just saw so a thing. I on then our, have to stay awake on our Discord from our friend Emily Lind, who's just landed in London. So she just put a little message out. So good on her, which is exciting. Yay. Um. So yeah. So I think next week's going to be a bit weird. For this podcast, if you're a regular listener, uh, I will. I'm not quite sure what the time differences are. I've got a feeling it Mando will drop. Will have dropped by the time we get there, or it might be slightly skew if. I'm just not too sure yet. So, depending on when okay. we can watch it and when we can review it, well, something will come up. It might just be me and Catherine sitting. It might just be me calling Catherine on the phone or Skyping and recording or doing something and we're just reviewing a quick review and getting yeah. something out. It probably won't be a long, yeah. hour-long review unless something like amazing happens and we can't stop talking about it. Um, I'll have Kat with me, my partner, so who knows? We might have been watching it together, although she's she hasn't started watching it yet. So it might be her plane watching. I'll download them all, put them on the Disney Plus app on the, yeah. on the iPad. But um, I've got a feeling it drops about eight AM London time. Wednesday. But I stand to be yep. Yep. Wednesday morning. Yep. Um so I you know, will have my accommodation and yeah, so Yeah. So we'll have to work out if you feel the need to, <laughs> to do, Well I've got to do and then we've got the blog pods as well, which I'm gonna do. Obviously we won't be in the panels, but we'll be on the floor. We'll be talking to people and people come up and say hi. Um all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you are listening and you're a listener of the show and you are going to celebration, Catherine and I will be there. Uh, Turbo will be there, who's been on the podcast as well. Matt Grant, who's been on the podcast, will be there. The Scruffies have been on the podcast, will be there. Emily Lynn, Brittany, a lot of the your favorite podcast people, Canto Bright Dispatch, um, some of the Imperial Senate people will be there. Um, Laura from Force Toast is going to be there. Other people, like if, if people that we know, if you come and say hello, don't feel like you can't say hello, just come and say hi. You could definitely get a sticker. Um, there might be some beanies left. I don't have many left, maybe. I'll have to see. Obviously, I've got to cover costs on those, but they're not that expensive if you really want one. Um, yeah, it would be great. It's great to talk to people. I need content for the blog pods anyway. So if you're happy to just say hi, and if you want to have a chat on, and I'll have a recorder of something, whether it's my phone or my other thing, just come and say hello. Um, it's awesome meeting people. I get... I can't believe that people listen to this podcast and actually know who me and Catherine are yep. and other friends of ours as well. It's very cool. And um, it's going to be great celebration. It's always great. It's a great time. So I can't wait. Will Catherine get into that Andor panel? Probably. That's the burning question. Will she go straight so- to the celebration stage and assume that Diego is going to turn up afterwards? What time's the Andor panel? One thirty. Is it? 
No, it's like three o'clock or something, I think. Oh, he wouldn't go check. before the Andor panel. That would be annoying because you'll be in line. Yeah. Yeah, it's all very annoying. You know, they, like Bobby I, you're back in charge now. You, you need to t- tell us the, you know, the timetable, the schedule, well, all please. The, other, the, the live stage is all scheduled for every day except Friday. Yeah. Which seems to me like... I haven't looked at the lives. I think it's yeah. very... De- I think that Friday is probably dependent on just who's available at what time, which is why they've just kept it open. Because it's like, well, the Lucasfilm panel's yeah. on, so there might be people related to that that they... You know, someone like Jude Law, you know, who's in Skeleton Crew. Jude Law yeah. might turn up at... You know, he's British. He probably lives in London. Probably will turn up at the Lucasfilm panel. So they don't want to say, hey, Jude Law's going to be on the celebrate on the live stage because they want to hold their powder. Mm. Stuff like that, I think, yeah. is why they haven't said anything. And in case with Diego Luna, I might be like, well, he might have to go back up to work. <laughs> he might have to do any, you know, it might be, we're going, well, we've got some maybes. Like the thing, like we know Ewan and Hayden and Rosario Dawson's there and, and Andy Circus, and they're all signing. So we know, we can, we know that they're going to be on those days. We can book them in. The Friday sizzle, skeleton crew, you know, all that kind of stuff, I think, which will be the big thing. They're going to hold their powder yeah. on that life. So I think the live stage on the Friday will be a really good place to just be in general because I think they'll have some good stuff. But again, you don't want to be in the queue for Andor and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, Diego's up on the, the live stage, which would be annoying because... Well, I don't, don't even joke. Which, don't even joke. No, well, I hope... You're that... the one who will have to, like, clean up the mess. Oh, well, that's not cool. That I will be. <laughs> well, it's... Yeah. Um, yeah. If that happens, yeah. I'll take your place in the line and you can run to the live stage. <laughs> Although you'd need a heads up, though. You know how we saw the teleprompter last time? We knew that he was coming. Yeah. Yeah. So at least we knew. Yeah. But um, we knew. We'll have to keep, yeah. I'll have to keep an eye. We'll we just need, our, spy. we'll just need our spies on it. Um, yeah, if anybody was. Okay. So everyone out there, you are all on Diego Watch. All right. You're on Diego Watch. <laughs> Don't say hi to Catherine unless you've got some Diego information. <laughs> if you want a sticker <laughs> from Catherine, I'll give Catherine some stickers if she wants to have, you know, just to have some to give her out randomly. If you want one, you have to give some Diego stuff. So, unless you're a Diego cosplayer, of course, and then you, you know, you've got to pose for a photo. Um, yep. Awesome. Well, I will see you. In London, if I don't in see you London? before. Yeah. I think we'll talk. We'll probably have a quick oh chat about any other logistics when we get off this, but we don't need to do this on the podcast. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks everybody for listening. Um, yeah. So the next yeah. podcast will come out when Mando comes out, but it might be not that very long. It might be a little bit haphazard, but we we aim to get something out. So stick with us and um, we'll see you in London. <laughs> Thank you.